Hey guys, so the topic that we are going to discuss today is about cyclones and it, it is part of geography syllabus for your UPSC civil services examination. It is under the climatology part and it is part of GS1 paper. Okay, so we have seen recently that the cyclone Umphun has created a havoc and has devastated many areas, many regions of Orisha, West Bengal and also the country of West Bangladesh. So it is important for us to know the details of cyclones and how it is formed and what are the other underlying information that we should be aware of to attempt a question regarding cyclone. Okay, so let us in. The, so I will try to cover some basic information about cyclones in this video. Okay, now let us begin. So before we begin the video, let us try and watch the table of contents that I'm going to cover in this video. So the index of this whole video will be what are cyclones, types of cyclones, cyclonic conditions, naming of cyclones and also we will be covering tropical cyclones, cyclones, anti-cyclones, temperate cyclones, tropical temperate cyclones, polar cyclones and also certain terms that are associated with the cyclones will be covered under the miscellaneous part. All right, so let us begin the video. So in a general way, when you're explaining what cyclones are, the image that come to our mind is about uh, the oppressive weather, oppressive sky, bad weather conditions, fast moving winds, which may be traveling with a speed of 200 miles per hour and also floods. Along with that, the main, uh, that is the main scary feeling that is giving due to the devastation it is causing. So there will be a huge havoc created in an area where a cyclone has passed. This will harm the life and property of people. There will be huge industrial infrastructure and also environmental losses. Trees may fall and also buildings may explode and there will be huge destruction in the area. Okay, this is in a general way. In a technical way or more geographically, if you're telling, the cyclones are actually a well-developed low pressure system. Okay, low pressure means because of high temperature or a high temperature, there will be a low pressure created above the warm ocean waters. Okay, so it is actually formed over slightly warm ocean waters and it like in a general explanation it causes heavy rain thunderstorm and storm surges okay along with that it is actually a closed circulation of air so there will be a rapid movement of hot hot air upward and this is actually subjected by Coriolis also so these minute details we will be covering in the upcoming slides okay so just for a general understanding they are a well-developed low pressure system and they will be formed over slightly warm ocean waters okay and the other images that comes to your mind when you think of cyclones are actually what it is actually the features or the characteristics of a cyclone okay so you can also see these images this is just for your extra knowledge or this is just for information this is the first image is the havoc that is created by a cyclone or you can say maybe typhoon and the second one is actually this image of cyclone umphun when it is approaching the Orissa West Bengal coast okay in the last slide I have given a mention about a term called typhoon okay so now let, let us in this video discuss about the types of tropical cyclones or the or it is not actually the types of tropical cyclones it is actually the regional names of tropical cyclones okay so please look have a look at this picture so it is the regional name of the tropical cyclone basically they are all the same just here and there are a few differences it is because of the locality intensity and the or the duration of the cyclone the difference is only in those aspects rest everything it is the same so here we can see typhoon is a term of a cyclone which is happening in the china sea hurricanes in caribbean islands tornado in west africa southern usa willy willies in northwestern australia so basically typhoons are actually formed in china sea at 6 degree to 20 degree latitudes and also they are steep they are having a steep pressure gradient and they are actually smaller than temperate cyclones they'll be having huge torrential downpour thunder lightning 
okay these are actually the fe basic features of typhoon which is happening in the china sea next comes the hurricanes which is happening in the caribbean islands so uh, there is a slight difference in the case of hurricanes it is because there is a it is having the hurricanes are having a calm and rainless center where the pressure is actually the lowest but around the eye or it is the that point is called as eye of the cyclone and if and the point around the eye they are having a strong or oppressive conditions and it fo forms dark cloud stormy weather okay these are all the basic features of hurricane next comes the tornado it is having small and violent it is small but violent it is having a dark funnel shaped cloud and if the main thing about tornado is that if a tornado has passed through the area literally there will be having complete devastation and if there is a house in between the house literally explodes is what the main features of the tornado okay and it is more frequent in spring season okay along with that let us have let us also discuss about some examples when it comes to cyclone we will be very much familiar the cyclone umfun fani and recently cyclone nisarga okay and typhoon recently in 2019 there was a cyclone which has hit japan and it has caused a huge devastation it is called as typhoon hagibis and we had cyclone or the hurricane dorian it has hit the bahamas and you can see the bahamas in the picture it is between the north and south america so when the hurricane dorian has hit bahamas it was so powerful and burst that time in the history of bahamas such a burst and powerful devastating cyclo or hurricane has hit the island okay and also the 2000 19 oh sorry 2020 june has marked the beginning of the official atlantic hurricane season also there is an important point to note that there is a storm called cristobal storm it is the it is one of the fastest starting like one of the fastest starting hurricane in the history okay so it is actually currently happening so you you have to make a note of these names and also when it comes to tornado the ef1 tornado which has happened in the last month is also an example okay Uh, the most fascinating thing about a cyclone is actually the name of the cyclone okay so we have we might have seen there is a wide variety or there is a wide range of names which a cyclone will be carrying and everything will be controlled by the world meteorological organization so the naming of the cyclone comes under the world meteorological organization but the point to note here is that point to be noted here is that it is not actually the world wmo naming the cyclones so they have basically divided the oceans into basins okay and there is a regional grouping for each basins and the naming of the cyclones which is happening in that basin will be according to the procedure of that particular group so there will be some there, there are some groups which uses alternatively male and female names names of fruits flowers animals and also humans so there is no fixed procedure and it is completely up to the regional grouping and when it comes to indian or the tropical cyclones we submit that is the countries in that basin are bangladesh india maldives myanmar oman pakistan sri lanka and thailand they submit the names to the indian meteorological department that is the imd and one after the other the names will be chosen from the list submitted to imd okay once all the names are used up they will uh, they will take up the new list and will be following the same procedure okay let uh, to make it clear we can see the list the previous list which was which was given by the countries to the imd okay so it was you can see the order of the countries and they will be arranged alphabetically and the names will be used one after the other and each can and each country will be taking chances so after fani it was vayu 
then it was hikka then it was khyar maha bulbul soba umfan these all are the cyclones which had happened in 2019 2020 time frame so it is it will be better if you know the uh, just you just give a look at these names and if something if there is a question related to these names just be sure that it is regarding the cyclones okay now let us look at the new set of names or the new list that is given by these countries in these countries to the imd so we can already see that this erga is the first name in the 2020 list of cyclones a 2020 list of names of cyclones and it is given by bangladesh and umfun was the last cyclone was the last name in the previous list and it was given by thailand so uh, whenever there is a cyclone that is happening it will be next next will be named as gati next will be nevar and similarly the rest of the names will be used okay now we have already seen what are cyclones how like different types of cyclones and the naming of cyclones we will now look into the conditions for the formation of cyclones so i have already told that cyclones require a like slight form over slightly warm ocean waters so they will definitely need a wide sea area along with a temperature which is more than 27 degrees celsius and the it should be having the presence of coriolis force and for those who are not aware of coriolis force please look into this picture so basically the equator is dividing the earth into two equal halves the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere so anything which is moving from the equator towards the northern hemisphere will be having a deflation towards the right side and anything which is having which is moving from equator to a, towards the north, southern hemisphere will be having a deflation towards the left side this is actually the coriolis force which is def, this is actually the coriolis force so it deflates the deflates those which are traveling from equator towards the north or south southern hemisphere okay and the it should and for the cyclone it should have a definite it is big be it being a low pressure system low pressure is inevitable and also there should be having upper divergence along with that a weak wind shear so it is due to it is one of the reason for the death of cyclone after 30 degree latitude is because the wind shear gradually increases post 30 degree latitude so it is inevitable that there is a weak wind shear available for the formation of cyclones okay and some uh, some major take aways from the from this is that you should know that there is no cyclone which is formed at the equator it is because coriolis force is absent at the equator okay because of that there is no cyclones formed at the equator and cyclones are mostly formed during late summers and basically they are formed at western tropical oceans it is because in the eastern side there is a there is a presence of cold current so base, uh, mainly the tropical cyclones are formed at the western tropical oceans the only exception is during the el nino Uh, i believe that you will be having a basic understanding of el nino if not i will be covering it in the uh precipitation video i'll be doing a video on precipitation in that i'll be covering el nino later and if there is an el nino the there is a reversal of the walker circulation happening and due to which there is a change in the monsoon pattern everything due only during those condition there is an exception wherein the cyclones are formed at the eastern tropical oceans otherwise it will be formed at the western tropical oceans and also presence of cold currents is an inhibiting factor for the formation of cyclones okay this these are the basic conditions and these are the major takeaways please make a note of these conditions okay if any questions come you can you will be able to answer with these basic information okay till now we have discussed what are cyclones and not okay here i am going to discuss about the major topics or the in depth analysis of cyclones all right so tropical cyclones are usually or they originate over the oceans in tropical areas and this is because since the weak wind shear 
since there is a weak wind shear it is limiting the formation of the cyclones between the equator and the subtropical jet stream so in the last video i have already mentioned that for a cyclone to form uh, one of the one of the condition one of the requirement is a presence of weak wind shear and this weak wind shear is limiting the presence of cyclone within the equator and subtropical jet stream okay that is the first point secondly the path of the cyclone it is in a parabolic shape and also the shape it is a parabolic path and it is giving the cyclone an elliptical shape which is basically symmetrical in nature and also the isobars of the tropical cyclone is mostly lo located very close to each other and also when we are talking about the wind in the tropical cyclones it is base it is actually a irregular movement of wind which is experienced during the tropical cyclones and there is a rapid upward movement of the hot air which is resulting in the close to circulation of air okay and also when we are talking about the velocity of the wind it is more over the ocean than over the land it is because there are physical barriers on the land right so this physical barriers is inhibiting the wind speed and also it is scattering the wind which makes the wind velocity more over the ocean and also velocity is more when we are away from the equator okay we all know that the presence of coriolis force is zero at the equator so when we are moving away from the equator the speed of the wind increases all right and next we are coming to the direction of the wind so there is an upward movement of air that we all understood and when it comes to the northern hemisphere the movement of air or the movement of the cyclone is in the anti clockwise direction the wind is moving in anti clockwise direction in the southern northern hemisphere and it is moving in clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere this is some important take away this is a major point when we are talking about tropical cyclone the direction of the wind should is has to be noted down all right and next we will talk about the path of the cyclone so i have already mentioned that they are having a parabolic path wherein the axis of the parabola is parallel to the isobars also due to the presence of the east easterly winds and also since the rotation of the earth is from west to east the beginning of the cyclone or the start the, the cyclone starts with the westward movement okay later after around 20 degree latitudes there is a shift in the direction of the cyclone towards the north and it is due to the presence of the coriolis force later around 30 degree latitude they turn they they again deflate towards eastern side and westerly winds are influencing this shift in the path also when we are about 30 degree latitude there are presence of there is a presence of cold currents and also the wind shear rapidly increases from here which results in the energy loss and gradually the cyclone subsides okay that is why i have mentioned that tropical cyclones die after 30 degree latitudes okay i hope you are clear with this topic and you can also have a look at the picture that is on the right side of the screen wherein i have mentioned the steps for the formation of the cyclone and also there is a small pictographic representation of the categories wherein the that is a saffir simpson scale of hurricane wherein they have divided the cyclones into five categories and also the range of the wind speed and also the destruction level that is caused by the hurricane so please have a look at this image okay let us move on anti cyclones are actually exact opposite of a cyclone what a cyclone is okay so when you study a cyclone when you study the details of the cyclone you don't need to study anti cyclone separately you just need to apply the negation part of that okay so they are having fine weather light wind high pressure at the center isobars are located for a part thick fogs in the winter they blow outwards and the direction itself is exact opposite 
that is in the northern hemisphere they blow clockwise in the southern hemisphere they blow anti clockwise and also usually there are there is an anti cyclone present between two cyclones so this is a point that you have to be noted also you can also you look into this picture wherein the anti cyclones is having a high pressure at the bottom and the wind usually diverges at the bottom wherein high pressure low pressure is located at the upper region and there is a convergence so you can remember that when there is a anti cyclone it will be high pressure anti cyclonic depression so had is the term which you can remember for anti cyclone and it will not cause rain okay when there is a had there is no rain so high pressure anti cyclonic divergence please make a note of this all right let us move on okay and the next topic that we are going to discuss is about temperate cyclones okay so temperate cyclones are actually mid latitude cyclones which is forming between 35 to 65 degrees celsius degree latitudes okay and the other names for temperate cyclones is extra tropical mid latitude frontal and wave cyclones extra tropical because it is formed outside the tropical areas and mid latitude because they are forming in the mid mid and high latitude region they are called frontal cyclones because the process for the formation or formation of the cyclone is basically frontogenesis that is why they have the name frontal cyclones all right next uh, is that the wind uh, the presence of the temperate cyclones is usually experienced during the winter late autumn and spring seasons so they are very much seasonal unlike the tropical cyclones okay and there is a rainstorm cloudy weather that is formed due to the temperate cyclones they will be having they will be having heavy downpour and also during the summer the path shift northwards and usually they move along with the jet streams okay so we will discuss that later and the usually the shape of the cyclone is asymmetrical and also they will be having an inverted v shape for the cyclones we know that the tropical cyclone is elliptical but temperate cyclone is having an inverted v shape let us see that picture and some details in the upcoming slides okay so one other important thing is the orientation of the temperate cyclones okay it is basically to from east towards the west okay i hope you are clear with this so you can see the satellite image of a temperate cyclone see the shape of the cyclone it is different from that of a tropical cyclone and also you can see the inverted v image and of the temperate cyclone okay so the important takeaways from here is that when can we detect a temperate cyclone so before the for the detection of the temperate cyclone there will be having a fall in temperature and there will be an halo visible around the sun and the moon also it begins with a drizzle and rust and ends with the heavy downpour also along with the temperate cyclone it is associated with anti cyclones so these are the major takeaways now we will explain we will try to explain we will try to cover the topic of frontogenesis and the formation of the frontal cyclone let us discuss about the frontogenesis process so the warm air from the equator meets the cold air from the polar region at the mid latitudes and there is a process of frontal formation at those areas okay so when there is a front for frontal formation there is a pressure and when this pressure drops there is a movement of air from high pressure to low pressure and the cold air continues to move towards the south and the warm air continues to move towards the north so the thing is that the cold front can move faster which results in the formation of an occluded front that is a inverted v shape okay so this rapid movement will create an anti clockwise movement of the air and it is resulting in the formation of a cyclone and this all process is induced by the coriolis force okay i hope you are clear with this and when whenever there is a warm air 
current or warm air column or a warm current meeting a cold current there is a formation of fog and it results in the rainfall that is what we are experiencing during a temperate cyclone there is a heavy rainfall it it usually started starts with a drizzle and there is a heavy rainfall so polar front is formed as a surface of discontinuity occur over subtropical high pressure and subpolar low pressure belts along with it along the tropopos and they actually advances with the jet streams okay so the thing is that the direction or the path of the sharp temperate cyclones can be discussed can be of three types okay if they are moving east to west the center moves swiftly eastwards all right if they are moving northwards they will die after 2 3 days and if they are moving towards the south it causes the mediterranean cyclone or the very common term western dis disturbances which is actually bringing rain to punjab haryana region of the country okay if i think you are clear for this topic so you can also see the images this is a formation of the fronto genesis and also this is you just need to go through this picture where the it is having it is it explains as explains a series of events that is happening during the cyclonic formation okay just go through the image you don't you don't need to remember all these details it is just for your extra information okay okay so now we have learned about what tropical cyclones are and what are temperate cyclones now we will have a quick recap on what are the differences between these two okay you have already learned this in the previous slides so this is just a recap so regionally tropical cyclones at the tropical region and temperate at the temperate region and the thing is tropical cyclones are thermal origin it is because of the temperature so when there is a increased temperature there is a formation of the tropical cyclones whereas the temperate cyclones are formed due to the dynamic process that is the meet frontogenesis process okay and tropical cyclones are formed just only over the sea wherein temperate cyclones can be formed over land and sea also uh, the tropical cyclones are seasonal whereas the temperate cyclones are irregular there is no seasonal influences in the temperate cyclone and it is actually tropical cyclones is actually confined to a small area whereas temperate cyclones cover a very large area the shape is elliptical for tropical and it is inverted v for the temperate cyclones the thing is that the size of the tropical cyclones vary with the strength okay but the size of the temperate cyclones vary with the region and tropical cyclones can cause heavy rainfall for few hours whereas temperate cyclones the rain pattern usually begins with less intensity to high intensity and it may it might last for weeks and in case of tropical cyclones the major discretion destruction caused is due to the presence of wind rain as well as storm whereas for temperate cyclones the destruction is mainly due to the presence of wind and also they are flood prone okay and also uh, there is a concept of eye of the cyclone in tropical whereas there is no concept of eye in the temperate cyclones and also tropical cyclones are not actually associated with anti cyclones whereas for every temperate cyclone there is an associated anti cyclone which is resulting in the subsiding of the temperate cyclones okay i hope you are clear with this let us move on now the last topic that we are going to discuss is about the polar cyclones this is not much important topic but this is it is important for us to understand and identify the key differences okay so they are formed in the antarctic regions and can reach up to 1200 miles wide it is not seasonal and can occur at any time of the year and they can unlike the other one they can form very quickly sometimes less, in less than 24 hours and also the direction or movement cannot be predicted okay also they can last up from a day to several weeks as well so this is basically understanding of what is the arctic or polar 
now uh, this is the final part of this video we are going to discuss some miscellaneous topics related to cyclones okay so here i will be discussing certain terms that are associated with the cyclones first term that is is, is the squall which is actually a sudden violent gust of wind or localized storm so squall is actually a wind which is sudden gust of wind next is a torrent it is actually a strong and fast moving stream of water we have heard that torrential downpour which is that strong and fast moving stream of water that is called a torrent the next term that we are going to discuss is about a storm surge it is basically that during a cyclone there is an abnormal rise of sea level as the cyclone is approaching or the crossing the coastal areas so this abnormal rise of sea level is called as the storm surge and when the storm surge is accompanied with the astronomical tide it results in the formation of a storm tide okay so please uh, make a note of the difference between the storm surge and storm tide and the last topic associated with the cyclone is the fulgjuara effect wherein when there is a two cyclone which is moving towards each other they revolve around one another and the smaller and the less intense ones will be moving in a faster manner in a faster like they will be moving faster this is known as a fulgjuara effect okay i hope you are clear with this with this we are concluding this video if you have any queries do post it in the comment section i'll be happy to reply thank you so